Hello and welcome to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and with me we have the uh, University of Vermont lecturer, Mr. Kevin Stapleton. And uh, Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, Kevin, let's jump right into it, but sure. not on what you are here for. Let the folks know a little bit about yourself. About me? Yeah, yeah. briefly. So, good, good. <laughs> so, uh, as you said, my name is Kevin Stapleton. I'm a lecturer at the University of Vermont. I've been there for uh, almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I teach courses in economics and community development, international development. Um, I'm also an economist for the state of Vermont. And uh, on a personal level, I have been coming to St. Lucia now for basically 17 years, I believe, 16, mm -hmm. 17 years. Uh, my family has come down before. I have a wife and child at home who are currently digging their way out of the snow. So, um, <laughs> so this is a pretty good place to be right now. Yes, no, welcome to the warmth. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, so your reason for being here, um, summarize that briefly first so we will know exactly yeah. what Kevin is here for. It's so, not holiday. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I came first in 2006 mm -hmm. as a graduate student, as a part of a class at the University of Vermont. And during that trip, fell in love with it as I think that's safe to say most people who come here do. And um, in 2010, they were looking for a new person to teach that course. I was available to do it. I was excited to do it. And at this point, I come back year after year because we have developed such great project partners down here, such great relationships with the people down here. Mm -hmm. I have people down here I call my friends. Um, and at this point, my involvement is uh, primarily an attempt to show students uh, the beautiful island and to get them involved in projects that I believe are meaningful for them and mm -hmm. meaningful for, the, for our project partners. Okay, let's talk a little bit about those projects. Sure. Um, how many do you have in total? Five. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, and um, what are they exactly? Okay, uh, should I give a detailed description now? Um, yeah, Okay. you can start with that. So, uh, we have two projects through the Consumer Affairs Department of the Department of Commerce that are, are closely related. Mm -hmm. One of them is a survey of St. Lucian's around uh, changes, price changes, inflation, price increases. Okay, well we can start with that one. their households, right? right. Um, so that survey was designed in cooperation with the Consumer Affairs Department, Ms. Wendy Frederick and her staff, Lyra mm -hmm. Joseph and others. Uh, that survey is trying to collect quantitative data about how inflation is impacting families in okay. St. Lucia. It's asking very clearly which, which areas of price increases are impacting them the most. Is it, costs, is it uh, increasing the cost of food? Mm -hmm. Is it increasing the cost of medical supplies? Because I think it's, my understanding of inflation in St. Lucia, which sort of matches a worldwide trend, is that it's very broad. Right. It's, it's pretty much everything. So we're trying to get some information for them to help policymakers better understand uh, how St. Lucians are being impacted by inflation. And, uh, you know, the data is available. If you want to know which products are more expensive, right. that data is readily available. If you want to know how that is impacting individual families. Mm -hmm. That's not something that has been looked at very closely. So we're hoping to gather that information through surveys. Uh, we're surveying and we surveyed in Viewfort on the first day, mm -hmm. in Sufrera yesterday, Castries today in Rodney Bay tomorrow. And if anybody's watching this and you're out in those areas, you'll see our students uh, out and about mm -hmm. uh, talking to people. We'd love to get any input people have. Uh, related to that project, is a more qualitative project, which is speaking with St. Lucians on camera, mm -hmm. um, having somewhat long, more detailed conversations about inflation, about price increases, and about how that is impacting their lives. Okay. So that the output of that project will be uh, a brief, probably three to five minute video that really just puts some, some names and faces and, and thoughts with the data we collected. All right. So what can um, locals expect to encounter um, and at what locations will you be apart from those you just mentioned? Are there yep. plans for other locations? There are. Uh, so the 
Tomorrow, uh, there will be a group filming in Castries doing the, the longer form interviews, the mm -hmm. sort of qualitative data work or qualitative information we're collecting. They will be in both Castries and Rodney Bay tomorrow. The survey group is Castries today and Rodney Bay, Rodney Bay and Groselet mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, you will see if you're out and about, uh, you might see it's four of our students, uh, for University of Vermont students carrying clipboards around, they kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they are, at first glance, tourists, and at second <laughs> glance, you think, they're, why are they carrying clipboards? So, or cameras, or video cameras, right? right. So, um, but they're out and about, and they'd love to talk to anyone who would, who's interested in giving input. At the end of this, mm -hmm. we will provide all the information to the Consumer Affairs Department, so the data will be available to anyone oh, okay. who actually wants to see it. And what is the hope, uh, what do you hope to, for the outcome of that survey to be, uh, especially um, with the analysis? What are you expecting um, to get from it? What's the revelation? So we work with the Consumer Affairs Department each year on what topic we should survey on. And for uh, 19 years now, I think, we've mm -hmm. conducted a survey on a topic of their choosing, but it's an issue that seems important to them. And this year, obviously, Inflation is a major issue. Yes, worldwide. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it's it's much bigger than just St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. But for the Consumer Affairs Department and the Department of Commerce, or the Ministry of Commerce, um, what we do is provide the information so that they can make more informed policy decisions. We are not policymakers. Mm -hmm. We collect the information. Uh, we share it with them. I think the hope is that we just help the ministry and policymakers have a somewhat better informed understanding of the issue. Mm -hmm. Last year we did that with COVID. In the past we've done it with bank fees and the minibus system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just an opportunity for people making decisions to do so with slightly better information. Is that part of, uh, or does that tie into uh, the broader picture for you at the University or with um, all what you're doing here, coming over, um, bringing the students uh, yeah. along with you. Does that tie into a broader picture for you at um, the University of Vermont? Yeah, so there's, there's sort of two aspects to that. One is that, what we mentioned briefly already, mm -hmm. inflation's a worldwide problem, yes. right? Yes. And this is an opportunity to take a small sliver of that, like we did with COVID last year, mm -hmm. and look at one area and how it's impacting people. Knowing that the impacts are, while they differ country to country, are pretty universal, right? People are made worse off mm -hmm. when prices rise and their salaries don't, or their income doesn't rise as fast as inflation. Yep. Um, but trying to get an idea of what that actually means for households is helpful for us in Vermont as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, more broadly, in the years that we've been coming down, uh, the students gain tremendous insight into uh, a lot of the stuff they've been learning about. The students who come down are generally seniors in their final year of school. Mm -hmm. And this takes all of the things they've learned in academia and asks them to put it to work, yeah. right? The research methods, the, uh, the data analysis. So for us, what it means for us is giving students a real world opportunity mm -hmm. to do some meaningful work. Now, with um, bringing in the real world, that's right, something that I have um, noticed a lot of the universities are really gearing into, not just the classroom, but taking you outside of it. You guys have taken them way outside. Way, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All yes. right, they brought them to a different country, mm -hmm. um, different cultures. Mm -hmm. How are they enjoying and adapting to um, the change of climate and, of course, the change of culture? Well, the, we'll start with the easy part. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the change of climate, um, <laughs> it's I don't know exactly what it is, but it's probably negative five Celsius there today, mm -hmm. and it's snowing. Mm -hmm. So the joke part of the answer writes itself, right? Happy to be here. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> Love it here. It's great. Um, but uh, uh, more, more importantly, mm -hmm. the students come here, and uh, first off, they get to experience a part of the world that most of them have not been to, mm -hmm. and a culture that is is not completely dissimilar from the United States, but uh, there's just enough difference that students have to step out of their comfort zone just a little bit 
to experience the island. And mm -hmm. we work hard to make sure that all of our projects have students experiencing St. Lucia as St. Lucia is. For example, uh, that probably didn't make much sense, but for example, the students take the minibus everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. And um, we could probably budget for hiring taxis for them to go everywhere, but we don't because we want them to experience the island. We want them to take a bus from Fort to Castries every day or a couple days and see what that is like. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we go out of our way. We stay in Rodney Bay these days, mm -hmm. but we go out of our way to make sure that um, they experience St. Lucian food. We eat at uh, uh, local restaurants in Groselais mm -hmm. and in Soufrere. Um, we do as much as we can to absorb them in the St. Lucian culture so that when they go home, so that when they go home, they have more than just pictures of the Pitons, which mm -hmm. are beautiful, yep. I'm not saying they're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that their experience is somewhat deeper than your average tourist. All right. Now, you said there were five projects in total. Yep. We spoke about one. Two. Two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, we get to call that two. Okay. We have a third project. Yep. Okay. Um, a kitchen garden. Yes. Tell us about that. Right. So this is our oldest project uh, over the past I'm going to call it 20 years, it's mm -hmm. probably 18 to be exact, but for the past 20 years, give or take, uh, every year we have worked with one school in St. Lucia mm -hmm. to either develop or enhance a garden on their, on their grounds. This year, it happens to be the Camille Henry School in Castries, mm -hmm. but we have worked, I mapped it out last year, and uh, I should have brought that with me, but we have worked in schools from Viewfort, Saltabus, Soufrere, mm -hmm. uh, all across the island. And each time, we, there are two components. There's either developing or fixing a garden plot. Yes. And then also working with the students to understand the relationship between food production and food security, giving students an opportunity to learn about producing your own food, the sort of financial independence that can come from being able to produce your own food mm -hmm. and giving the school an opportunity to create a learning space in that garden. Okay. And we work hard to do that and we, we uh, provide activities for the children that we hope will spark an interest in agriculture. Now you mentioned the schools that you have done gardens at previously. Um, what were the results of those gardens? So, well, some schools still have the gardens, they're still active. Mm -hmm. Other schools, over time, you know, the garden, they don't maintain it, it loses its. But regardless of whether the school maintains the garden 20 years later, and mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to go back to the school where we started and see if they're still using that garden, but regardless of whether the school maintains the garden, mm -hmm. um, the student experience is carried on. And for our students, and I like to think for the St. Lucian students as well. Uh, in the short time we're here, they form really, really fun relationships with the young people. Mm -hmm. And while we get to experience St. Lucia, the young people in the schools get to experience some people that are different from them, right? Yeah. And, and learn yeah. from them. And I think the schools appreciate the energy that we bring down to, you know, these are, uh, you know, 20 something, 20 something age college students, mm -hmm. full of life, full of energy, can't wait to get down here and start to work. And uh, I think that is reflected in the excitement that it creates. Now, you um, previously met um, with the Minister for Commerce. Um, briefly tell us uh, how does this initiative fit in with the goals and objectives um, she stated? Right. So, one of her emphasis was trying to re-engage young people in agriculture because mm -hmm. just like in the United States it seems listening to her that um, sort of the average age of a farmer is old enough to be concerning mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. young people don't seem to have the interest in agriculture. The zeal farming. is not there. What's that? The zeal is not there. Yes yeah. yes yes and you know it it's understandable because mm -hmm. the food's all available in the supermarket mm -hmm. right so um, but she expressed a strong interest in trying to engage students, uh, younger students in agriculture again. And I think this is an important part of that. We work with 
uh, well, in the United States, we would call late elementary school, but fourth, fifth, sixth graders. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping that you're not going to get all of them, but if you can get one or two each year to really engage in agriculture and spark an interest in that, mm -hmm. or we give them seeds to bring home, we give them plantings to bring home, but if you just one or two of them each year gains an interest in that, uh, it, it can have a gradual but meaningful impact All on right. her goal to, to re-engage agriculture. All right. We'll take a quick break, and Great. when we get back, we will have more with Mr. Stapleton. He is, of course, the lecturer at the University of Vermont, here with the five projects in total for our young people. Maybe even take it to their parents, too, of St. <laughs> Lucia. This is TV30. I'm your host, Kendall Eugene. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TV30. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. Here with us this morning is uh, Mr. Kevin Stapleton, a lecturer at the University of Vermont. And uh, today we're discussing a few projects that they have uh, collaborated with various agencies in St. Lucia on. Uh, Mr. Stapleton, again, welcome. Thank you. And uh, speaking of collaborating with agencies in St. Lucia, I um, realized that the university um, also collaborated with the uh, St. Lucia National Trust. Yep. Um, of course, that is to improve the collective appreciation for our heritage. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who believes that um, a sense of national pride is needed, mm -hmm. must have a, um, a sense of national pride, but the way to that, um, the way to get there is by understanding your island, your country, right. where you're from. Right. Tell us about the uh, collaboration between you and the National Trust, please. So this year, our National Trust project is primarily focused on Pigeon Island, mm -hmm. Pigeon Point. I'm never sure which one, but Pigeon Island. Pigeon <laughs> Island. So it's primarily focused mm -hmm. on Pigeon Island and improving access to resources there and educational resources mm -hmm. there. Uh, one thing that we did is uh, spent a good part of time going through the National Trust website mm -hmm. and um, adding content fixing broken links, which, you know, it happens with every nonprofit organization trying, they don't have the time to, so we're, we're helping with that, mm -hmm. which is very tangible, right? Like there are 67 dead links and here's how we fix them right. things. And here's some nice photos for that. But also at Pigeon Island, we are um, working with them to improve the educational materials that they provide. Okay. We are uh, working with them on a, on an interactive map that will take people around the, the island to, learn about the, the various things that are there. Mm -hmm. um, as I say this, I'm realizing I don't know all that much about it after all these years mm -hmm. here. But uh, the idea is to improve educational opportunities for St. Lucians, which is part of increasing people's... Um, the awareness? Awareness. Mm -hmm. And when you, aware, when you understand your heritage better, yeah. you appreciate it more. Right? So the history is very important. Yes. And um, the website is uh, full of... Um, information that can benefit. So I can understand why the dead links um, that you were trying to revive is extra important to getting the um, user engaged and learning more on uh, the island and of course yeah. um, the National Trust itself. I should say in, in defense of the National Trust real mm -hmm. quick, uh, they found 67 concerns on the website. They weren't all dead links. There's not, I don't, it wasn't 67 dead links, but it was 67 places where the website could be optimized. All right. Right. So Let's make it better. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the steps that were taken or discussed, um, was it in aid of achieving a specific goal? Would it, did it get to that goal? Uh, the, well, the, the goal mm -hmm. is to improve educational opportunities for St. Lucians about Pigeon Island. Mm -hmm. The objective was to improve the materials that are available. Uh, and we have accomplished that. Excellent. But this project is not over. Okay. Uh, I expect that in future years, we will continue to work with the National Trust. They've been mm -hmm. a great partner. Um, Augustine Dominique 
in particular was our original project partner down there, mm -hmm. uh, Finola, whose last name is escaping me. Over the years, we've built a good relationship with them, and I think this project has a lot of potential. Excellent. Um, the particular areas of focus, uh, is there a specific area you're, you're looking at with um, the collaboration with you and the National Trust, or are we looking at everything holistically? Holistically, right. And every year, um, the relationship gets a little deeper, mm -hmm. and the work that we do changes a little bit, but it's really driven by them. What are their needs? What can we do to support their work that will also provide a meaningful experience for our students? And we'll probably talk about this in a minute, mm -hmm. but as much as we talk as if we are coming down to provide resources and information and, and person power and all that for St. Lucia, uh, the biggest reward is for our students mm -hmm. and the learning that they gain by taking part in the program. I think we could go into that okay. now. Yeah. Sure. All right, so let, let's talk about the um, experience and of course how much of the um, uh, benefit it is uh, for yeah. the students. How meaningful is it to them? It, I, I can't begin to describe how meaningful it is for them. Uh, we've brought over the years must be somewhere in the range of 300 students down here. Mm -hmm. uh, almost to a student, I think they would tell you that this was the most impactful experience they had in college uh, during their four years at the University of Vermont or however many other years mm -hmm. they are at school. Um, it really does tie together all of the things. That, so just as an easy example, students in our program, Community Development Applied Economics, they learn about international development and, and what what creates economic growth and how small island developing states grow and how and the challenges of growing there. And then they also learn about research methods mm -hmm. and how to do quantitative and qualitative research. Um, they learn about sustainability and environmental sustainability. But after three years of learning about that in a classroom, mm -hmm. they come down here and put all of those skills to work. And I think they would tell you that not just because it's a beautiful place, but also because it's impactful. Their experience here is sort of the, the bow tie on, on, their, um, on their college experience. Excellent. Now, I understand that all of this here is a mutually beneficial agreement mm -hmm. um, in that staff from the Ministry of Commerce can also access educational opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of the programs um, that staff can or have accessed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so prior to the pandemic, for a couple of years, mm -hmm. I, I believe a dozen staff, somewhere around the range of a dozen staff from the Consumer Affairs Department, traveled to the University of Vermont mm -hmm. for trainings around. Uh, we have a very large consumer assistance program, which is meant to help consumers when they have, feel they've been wronged, right? Which is not all that different than what CAD does. Um, so we offered training in that and also in research methods when they came to Vermont. And we would like to be able to return to that. We are also, every year when we come down, we provide training for staff in the Consumer Affairs Department around research methods, around technical writing, um, so that they can better do their work. Mm -hmm. And then we are hoping in the very near future to be able to expand those efforts and have some online trainings that St. Lucian staff within the Ministry of, the Ministry of Commerce, Commerce can yeah. access. Okay, excellent. Um, this is the 20th anniversary of uh, the uh, cooperation agreement. How has that been for you guys? Uh, amazing, truly amazing. Uh, the idea that uh, 20 years ago, Dr. Jane Kalidinsky and uh, Mr. Philip McLaurin met mm -hmm. at a conference and hatched this idea and 20 years later, and this is my, I believe my 13th year, four, four, 14th year maybe, um, it is still going strong. Mm -hmm. It is the oldest remaining international program at the University of Vermont. We feel like we are a part of the Consumer Affairs Department, that we provide some benefit to them. They provide amazing opportunities for our students. Um, it is truly uh, the, 
the, one of the, probably the most important international relationship at the University of Vermont, and um, the, the impact on students mm -hmm. is immeasurable. Now, personally, you know, right, educationally, we understand what the impact has been, but personally, how has it been for the team? We know the visit here and everything. How has it been for them? For, for my students? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. yeah. So uh, I come down every year with another professor, Thomas DeSisto. Um, different students every year, but for them this year, uh, it's been, as I said, it's, it's been a, a very rewarding educational experience for them. It always is. Um, they, every year, find, for me, new insights mm -hmm. into St. Lucia. Uh, they get to experience their first uh, saltfish, which sometimes they think is good. <laughs> but usually, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's an acquired taste. Yes, <laughs> yes. 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 it's yes. different. Yes, but you know, they, they, they get to experience mm -hmm. um, all of the unique things that make St. Lucia St. Lucia, and uh, and this year is no different, and it's been great. And I, I just say, um, and I don't know if this is on your list of questions or not, but for me personally, yeah. me personally, mm -hmm. um, when I first started coming, it felt like um, an amazing research opportunity, mm -hmm. an amazing opportunity to go somewhere nice. By the third or fourth year I was coming, it felt like I was. Um, starting to come home every year mm -hmm. and by now uh, my family has been here more than once uh, it this has become part of my family and uh, I look forward to it every year I I have friends down here I when I call my wife she asks how I won't name any names but how no, my friends are mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. um, it is a part of my life and a part of my family's life and uh, I have to I have to uh, uh, pinch myself once in a while that I have landed mm -hmm. in such a great opportunity over the years. Excellent. Um, can we see other projects being implemented in the future as we get ready to conclude? Yeah, so we, we will be back next year. Mm -hmm. um, there will undoubtedly be another survey. Um, there will undoubtedly be work with uh, the National Trust. Mm -hmm. We'll probably work in a school again. But I will say, if there's any organizations or government agencies or NGOs out there that are interested in collaboration, we are always looking for new project partners. Excellent. And if, um, if anyone wants to reach out, we'd, we would love to speak with them about ideas and options that we can provide. How can we get more information on the projects that have already been completed? Where do we go? Um, the easiest way to do that would be to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. It's kevin.stapleton, S-T-A-P-L-E-T-O-N, at U, V as in Victor, M as in Michael, dot E-D-U. Mm -hmm. You can also reach out to the Consumer Affairs Department. They have the long history, but um, I'm happy to speak with anyone who wants to learn more. Excellent. Well, Mr. Stapleton, thank you so much for being our guest today on our TV30. Great. Always a pleasure having you here with us. And uh, give our regards to the family. Will do. Excellent. Thank you very much. Folks, this has been TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. I'm your host, Kendall Eugene. Thank you for joining. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.